to install your Apigee 1 mic interface on your Mac. First, uh, once you've got the unit out of the box and everything, don't bother with the CD or DVD in the box. Always download a fresh version from the website. So go to apogeedigital.com and once you've logged in there, go to support. Then once on the support page, click where it says product registration and software downloads. Then click downloads. And then choose the product. Scroll down to one. It's in alphabetical order. One is about halfway down. Put in your info. And click get downloads. Now you're looking for, um, basically click on where it says one, it'll jump down to one, install current one software installer for Snow Leopard, if you're running Snow Leopard, and OS 10.5.8. If you have an older OS installation of Mac, then you would install the previous one, which is for 10.5.7, but most of us will probably be on 10.5.8 or later at this point, so install the current one software installer by clicking the link. Then let her download. Okay, once that file is downloaded, you're going to open up the installer, double click on the package, click continue. Click continue again, continue again, agree, and now follow the directions. You're going to think these are funny because it's going to tell you to unplug, plug, unplug, plug, but it's basically updating the software inside the device when it does this. So plug it back in. Be real careful with the connector on the Apogee 1. It's, it's a small connector and it looks like it doesn't really want to fit at first but that's just because it's a really just a really tight connector so just insert it really carefully and be patient okay alright and guess what you get to type in a bunch more information because they love you just gonna put in my email address Okay, I've uh, put in the serial number, which is on the back of the unit, right below the barcode. Typed it in, clicked plus, it recognizes it as a one. Um, I'm going to uncheck the notify me of product info because I don't want to be on the mailing list. And I think all you got to type in is an email address and a serial number. So let's try clicking continue. Okay, now it's going to let me install. It's going to ask me for my password. Type in your password and it even makes you restart so be prepared for the fact that you're gonna to have to restart after you finish installing this you don't necessarily have to have this software to run the Apogee one but in order for it to do all of the functions flawlessly that you need to do like um, monitor uh, the microphone input into your headphones this is a, a required um, step so once that's done restart and uh, you'll be back in business and the next part of the video I'll show you how to actually configure the Apogee Maestro control panel software. Well when your machine booted back up um, it probably asked you if you wanted to use your Apogee do uh, I'm sorry Apogee 1 as the default system sound and I recommend that you click no. Um, that's just so that you know you don't want every sound effect and noise your computer makes to come through the Apogee usually you want to keep that through your computer speakers and not through your Apogee so it doesn't come out of your headphones so I say no usually for that so now that it's set up um, let's go find it it's in our applications folder um, which I'll go from the dock down here and go to applications and it's the purple O Apogee Maestro click on that and then you see this you've got two different panels. You've got a mixer panel 
and a control panel. So what we're going to do is show you first the control panel. So if you had more than one device, they would show up on this list. You can have multiple Apogee ones plugged in. Just leave it set to level. And now let's choose, since we're just using the internal mic, let's just choose internal mic. And turn it way down. There we go. So you can turn the knob on the control panel with the mouse or you can turn the knob on the, the Apogee one itself and if you'll see the knob turns on the screen. And you'll see that the in symbol for the internal mic is this picture right here and if you look at the front of the Apogee one itself it has little symbols telling you what mode it's in right now. So if your machine, if your Apogee one does this, where you've been using it and all of a sudden you get uh, beach ball and it goes away and you lose control of the device, I would just recommend um, unplugging it and plugging it back in and just reset it. So I'm going to do that now and I'll, re I'll relaunch the Apogee Maestro just to be sure. So I'll plug it back in. And then I'll go to my recent applications and launch Apogee Maestro. And it's asking, do you want to set it for the default sound? I'm going to say no. Okay. And let's see if, if uh, we got levels. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. And we got levels. All right. And like I said, I'm going to leave this set to no. You can once you've set it to no, you can say, "Do not ask me again, please." And then it won't bug you again. Nope. Get a little beach ball action here. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you. All right, there it goes. So, so now that I've got it set to internal mic, I don't have an external mic plugged in, so I'm going to leave it just set to internal mic for now. And I've got levels there. Like I said, I can control it from the front of the machine by turning the little silver dial. And then if you push the silver dial again, it's going to switch to the output control. And now I'm controlling the other knob, which is the headphone or speaker output level. Switch it back to internal mic. And so what I'm going to do now is check the zero latency or built-in monitoring. So to make the uh, to make it so you can monitor the uh, input of the device in your headphones in real time, you have to go down to where it says to hardware and change at to out left and right and then you'll turn up the input fader and turn up the software faders and you can pretty much just turn them all the way up this has nothing to do with recording levels this is only monitoring or what you hear in your headphones played back to you that's all this is so once you've set those settings I recommend that you save those settings so that uh, if you ever you need to bring up this panel again it'll be saved so just do file save as and install the uh, maestro I'm gonna call it um, apogee one default and I'm gonna put it right on the desktop where I can find it Oops save. Now I should be able to quit uh, the Apogee panel and it should remember the settings that I just chose so um, we can double check I'll just open the Apogee 1 default MST that's basically the preset we just created 
that'll launch the Apogee one. And it will then uh, show us what settings we had saved into the system. So once you have that saved version of the uh, Maestro panel, you can just double click it. I like to keep it on the desktop. Just double click it and open it up before you want to use it. And that will make sure that your hard hardware settings are all saved properly and the monitoring is set up correctly so you'll hear audio in your headphones. So now that's done, I'll go ahead and launch my recording software. In this case we're using Twisted Wave. And we're just going to tell Twisted Wave now to use the Apogee One. Go to Preferences, Devices, set the input to Apogee One, output to Apogee One. So it's going to record the input from the Apogee, whatever device we're using, the internal mic or external mic. We'll leave the output set to Apogee One so our, when we play back it comes through the headphones. And let's give it a try. Okay, we're doing a recording test using the built-in microphone of the Apogee One. Let's see how the built-in microphone of the Apogee One actually sounds. Stop. And let's do playback. Now if you're experiencing f slight flaky behavior, it may be the USB port on your computer. I am using a pretty old MacBook Pro and I have a hunch that something's wrong with my left mouth, my left uh, USB port. Okay, so now I've shifted the Apogee one to the other USB port on my MacBook Pro. It was on the left side where the power connector is, now it's on the right side. And let's see if things behave. So I'm going to open up the Apogee One default file I created. And things are already looking a lot better. The Apogee software loaded up, the Maestro software loaded up immediately. No money, no funny business. The driver's working. I'm getting audio from the mic from the mic built into the Apogee. Push the little silver wheel, switch to my headphone volume. Getting plenty of volume, so that looks good. So now I'm going to launch Twisted Wave again. Double check my preferences, make sure it's set to the Apogee One. Click record. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Recording using the internal microphone of the Apogee One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. And let's see if we get playback. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Recording using the internal microphone of the Apogee One. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's the built-in mic of the Apogee One. As good as that sounds, imagine what your, your studio mic's going to sound like. So that's it. That's how you get the Apogee One working. And uh, I'm kind of glad we had that bug there with the USB port. Um, because that gives you an idea of what you might be able to prepare for and how to handle it um, if that happens. So just make sure you're plugging the Apogee One directly into the computer. Don't plug it into a hub. Plug it right into the computer so it's getting plenty of power. And uh, so if you've got one computer port that's a hub and the other one that's just the Apogee, or one USB port that's the hub, one that's the Apogee, you should be good, in good shape. So that's it. If you have any other questions, you know how to find us at vostudiotech.com. Thanks again. My name is George Woodham. Have a great one.